Hey honey. Hey, honey. Sweetie, beautiful. Can you come in the office? Um, I have a couple things to put away first. I mean, you just have to have a little talk about something. Yeah, about that thing you like did that you probably shouldn't have done. But sweetie, I am not mad about it. You just have to have a little talk about it. Oh, hello folks. Welcome back. For I'm the one, the only I am Hobo Tom. And I saw a movie with, again, the most beautiful, amazing, kind, loving, caring, charming. Hello, folks. From the one, the only I am Hobo Tom. And it's someone's birthday today. And I have not, and actually it's a, went down the wrong street again. I do have to get used to where she lives because this is getting a little confusing every so often. Well, I think I'm just going to do this. So now I know where I'm going. Well, we are off to movie night. Date day is always a fun day. You can see I'm kind of dressed up. A nice little pink shirt on. And all her stuff. All the illegal candies. And maybe some illegal sodas as well. There we go. But we shall see what happens. Yeah, and I think we're gonna see the movie Trap, which is what she wanted to see. And you know what? Happy lady friend, happy life. I say so so. So we'll see. Then it's off to dinner. Again, it's also her birthday, as you can tell by the birthday bag, flowers, and cake, the birthday bag full of stuff. So yep. I'll see everyone later. Bye. Quick look. We're in number three at the very end. Yeah, because I don't think we're missing. We might miss some like the previews and stuff. But. And so Speak. we still need to see. Um... Most bodacious badonkadonk woman I know. And we went to go see a movie because she said. I want to get, I'm, wow, this shirt fits amazingly good for me not wearing it in a long time. Yep, we want to go see movie. We want to go see Trap. And again, a little preview of that. What kind of man do you want to be? What do you want people no, to think? No, I'm not going to see you coming. We only got six of us. The first time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for using photo me. Oh, not at all. Thank you for having me. Please note that headwear is not permitted. Oh, beg your pardon. And first, when we got to the theater, up there nice and early, we were chill, relaxed, tranquilo. We saw some previews. Not gonna break any laws, Riley. Get there when you want to get there. I promise. Trust me. And then we actually saw the movie itself. I like this movie. This was good. It's so the premise is you have this. This, this father and daughter go to see a concert. Lady Gaga, whoever. So that's probably pretty appropriate analogy. But however, it's a trap supposedly set by the FBI to catch this person called the Butcher. Again, I guess a butcher is using tools like this, which I should put away. Sorry about that, sweetie. You didn't need to see that. Yep, everything's good here in the office. Uh, just give me a few minutes to clean up. Yeah. So again, it's about the butcher who's a serial killer. Um, they, set a, they set a trap for him. They said, we're going to interview every man because we have good intel that he's at this concert. So that's the whole premise. Guy and his daughter's there. Average Joe. Fireman. 
Number one, never trust firemen. Um, my two less than stellar experiences with firemen came from all the negative news from the Staten Island Fire Department about how they would party a lot and party with women a lot and touch women a lot and make women use beer bottles a lot not to drink from that's a whole other issue and then well three reasons one when I told my truck my Jeep my one of my first Jeeps in an accident I was a delivery person they said huh I bet you're gonna pick up your, your, your Jeep I'm like you asshole like stick to firefighting jackass and then someone pulled the fire alarm at a condo complex and the fireman just very casually I'm like what the hell is going on Fireman comes up and says, yeah we're just gonna take the elevator and not feel like walking so yeah again they do a great service but the TV shows make them heroic look look more heroic than they actually are and they're not all saving kittens well I guess to find kittens and other terms but yeah all that stuff notwithstanding guys a fireman he has a family daughter son wife suburbia perfect suburbia Although, he ne although it was in Philadelphia, and I, I swear, I never heard of that arena. Because it was all... And I never realized that the police just, just call it Phila PD. It's like, no, they're called Philadelphia police. Or they might have... Like a specific... Borough or borough of Philadelphia. I know there's different boroughs or different, or they just might say Precinct 32, PA. Something, something, but not Philly. I don't use Philly. Only dirty, disgusting Philly fans. It's the only thing I dislike about this movie. They, they did not depict dirty, disgusting, filthy Philly fan enough. Well, maybe that's the busher. Maybe everyone's the busher in Philadelphia. Who knows? That's going off track. So they're at a concert. Yep, rocking out to the music. All of a sudden, he notices, man, there's a lot of police here. Goes up to the guy, super casual. Hey, what's going on? What's? I've, I've been here a thousand times. What's, what's with all the cops here? Well, yeah. And of course, one employee tells him, yeah, they're there to get someone. Um, who he, again, eventually pickpockets, gets his ID. And then the whole premise of this is that this one butcher is trying to leave the stadium because they have the FBI profiler and they and she knows exactly who they're looking for. Like this guy literally looks like everyday Joe. So the whole plot is like and he got lucky a few times is that he would figure out he was trying to figure out a way how to get out of this concert. Then the daughter's ex friend's mother shows up. And they try and talk, and he's just like, "Lady, I'm stressed now. We'll talk this out over. Of the girls talking out over pizza later." Um, again, he takes on the role of various employees, which seems way too easy to do, by the way. Because I know, because I work at a civic center, and it probably. <laughs> and I don't know if they did this for that reason, but yeah, I mean, if you wanted to walk into the Ocean Center. All you have to do is wear a black shirt, black pants, black shoes, and say you're one of the staff. Oh, I just told someone how to do bad stuff here in Daytona Beach. I, I'm gonna get demonetized. Wait a second. I, I was never monetized. Whatever then. It's Daytona Beach. They do bad things around no matter what. They get in, <laughs> hey, they get in a fight. That was weird. Two fathers got in a fight at a cheerleading event. Which is just odd. But yeah. Back to the movie part. Trap. So again, uh, the one thing he pickpockets the guy's tag. He learns the, the password. Uh, just acts casual. And he has his badge. Black Jays up. I'm just here to check on the coffee. You know, cops need their coffee and donuts. They'll always like anyone who brings them more coffee. Of course, the cop asks for sugar. It's like, hey, yeah, where do you guys keep the sugar? It's like, oh, man. Joe was supposed to bring that. Like, sorry about that here. You can have my private stash. Cops are like, you're cool. You gave me sugar for my coffee. 
that's all they care about is their, their coffee with their with their pizza. But yeah, that's Philadelphia. That's a whole different thing. So then uh, he's walking around, still trying to find an exit while his daughter's enjoying to the concert, rocking out to it. Bam, bam, bam. I let's see her. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try. But to rock out to Lady Gaga, not necessarily my thing. Yep, so he goes through everything. He finally, he of course, then lies to the producers and Light Shenlon. And his daughter is actually the performer on stage. She's actually pretty good. Sounds almost like Lady Gaga. So it makes kind of sense. It's that whole teeny bopper concert thing, so it kind of jives. Well, obviously, yeah, she's a cancer survivor. This means a lot. She has to invite upstage because the only way to get out is to be part of the backstage crew. Of course, the. The thing is, the FBI then tightened their reins. And I thought, for a second, because I know that M. Night Shyamalan does do a couple twists, where, hey, they've limited everything, where the only way he can get out is by backstage. That's where the traps can get sprung. Uh -uh. So they do manage to get out, because he tells the singer, hey, I'm the butcher. This dude's going to die unless we get out here on your limo, because you're the only one not being checked. So the uh, they take so she takes them to their house. They have a good time. The singer then twists the plot, saying, "Hey, I'm not at your house. I'm let me go into your bathroom with your daughter's cell phone." Which seems creepy. But yeah, then she calls the police. She goes on Instagram, gets her fans, "Hey, where is this place with a broken lion statue and a place with a blue door?" So yeah, uh, please show up to the house. catch the guy initially um, goes bonkers tells the kids to go away probably slaps his wife around a little bit please show up he escapes because he was smart he made a tunnel to the neighbor's yard and then he beat up a cop took his uniform you see one of many cops there another cop in a uniform makes sense uh, driving the limo said, yep, we're going to escort this person. I'm here to escort. Gets in the front seat of the limo driver. I guess he offs the limo driver. Takes over himself. Take you to some street. Again, he's like, yeah, I'm out now, baby. So again, the daughter and son are off to the parents. He He's like, singer, it's, it's butcher in time. Really shouldn't do that. That's bad for YouTube views yeah uh, please show up because she got in the, she managed to escape a little bit there's a whole bunch of fans he slips out leaves the police here there smart guy puts on the hoodie uh, saw some merchandise saw a box of merchandise guy in a t-shirt and a hoodie in Philadelphia there's a lot of them folks yep pretty common thing especially after a concert the guy wearing a concert shirt hoodie and jeans yeah that's not going to draw any of that that will draw no tension in philadelphia if you wear a raiders jersey in philadelphia whole other issue random t-shirt hoodie pants looks like everyone yeah guess what they're all over the place so then he goes back to the house talks to the wife twist the wife is the one who called the cops because she thought he was cheating on her, but then she had the suspicion that he was the butcher because of what he, because it was the cleaning fluid. It's like, this isn't the cleaning fluid used at the fire department. Like industrial grade hospital cleaning fluid. So yeah. Folks. That's how you get away with the murder. Don't use don't use very singular stuff. Use the generic off the brands off the shelf brand, which means use Walmart brand, not Clorox bleach. But yeah, so the wife is the one who called the police, called the FBI, said, "Hey, I think my husband's a killer," and because for a whole bunch of reasons, because she, she went to his, she tailed him, went to his other house, found all the stuff, again. Cleavers, duct tape, rope, all the stuff I have here at my house. So yeah, 
And the wife says, wife tells the cops, starts again playing psychiatrist, being the older mother. It's like, no, you don't want to do that. Made him feel a little bit sick by putting some powder in the, putting some knockout drugs, crush it up, put it onto his pie. And then takes a couple taser shots. Don't tase me, bro. Like, I just want to start a tase him, tase him. The police made the ultimate sin. One, he was wearing long sleeves. Should have rolled up his sleeves to at least the elbow so, they could, so he couldn't hide anything. Two, while he was in cuffs, they allowed him to fix the bicycle that was laying on the front grass. And he set it upright in the early position. What I thought honestly happened is that I'm like, oh, why did the cops let him do this? Search him again. So I figured he took some uh, chain grease, put on his finger, lube up them cuffs. What he did, he actually broke a, so in custody, he broke the spike off the wheel, slipped it, it down his long sleeve. He got in, pulled it out, broke it, got loose. And now the butcher's still loose because the Philadelphia police are incapable of doing their basic policing job. And that's actually how the movie ended. Actually, no, the movie ended towards the end of the credits where you see the black vendor watching his TV set and realized he helped the butcher. He just said, huh? Yeah. Never give out secret passwords. That's the first thing they tell you at work. Do not give out any passwords. Do not let people in unless you know exactly who they are. Again, when you let the butcher in your workplace, bad things tend to happen. But yeah. So that was a trap. Very good movie. I uh, The things I liked about it is, one, it was a different perspective. It reminded me of that Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. Or he's the policeman trying to get out because terrorists took over the igloo in Pittsburgh. So first, the opposite. This is the criminal trying to evade the police. Normally, it's about the police chasing the criminal, and you have various criminal elements and uh, scenes of the criminals trying to flee and all that stuff. But this focus specifically on him trying to leave his situation. Different. I enjoyed it. My lady friend would be absolutely horrified if she saw the cleaver, the duct tape, the rope in my office now. But yeah, that was a trap. Um, it was different, not necessarily my type of movie. It had that fun twist. The wife, wife always rats out the husband. Yep. So, you know what? It was a solid. Tell you what. I'll give it a surf and turf rating with the modifier that it might not be lobster and prime rib. Just a nice, nice mock tender steak and crab cake. Yeah, I'll say this is a surf and turf movie. That was it. I, I better put all these implements away before a lady friend comes over. And thinks something probably bad. I'll see everyone later. Yeah, and check me out later.